What's happening, gig performer friends and potential gig performer user friends? Matt Vanacore here with my pals at Gig Performer, and today I am going to dive into the world of recording the outputs from Gig Performer if you are a live musician. So I'm going to take this one today from the approach of a singer-songwriter, either a keyboard good player and a singer or a guitarist and a singer. Got my little guitar here ready to roll. And let's say I'm using Gig Performer to get studio quality sounds but live on the stage now if you want to dive into this a little deeper you definitely want to check out our other videos so click that like and subscribe button uh, we've got a ton of content coming out it's always great and we've got great videos featuring how to get great guitar tones out of gig performer if you're using it live you don't need an amp anymore all you need is your laptop and you can sound on stage as clean as you do in the studio so let's take a look at the setup i've got here just so you can see so i'm looking at the wiring looking at the back end of things here and you'll see that i've got two audio inputs Inputs. Um, my audio input one coming from my Universal Audio Thunderbolt right here. Okay, mic line one, and then mic line two. So mic line one is my vocal microphone here. I'm a singer-songwriter. I'm going to sing. I got a vocal microphone. And mic line two is now set up to my guitar. So I've got the guitar running through a bit of an amp. I've got some good sounds, you know, a little reverb on there. I've got it all set up the way I want. So again, I'm using like you know, higher quality studio effects, some stuff that might be a little bit trickier to bring on the road, but not so much with Gig Performer. So if you check it out, my guitar is going into Guitar Rig 6 FX. So that's a plugin. So I'm running this plugin. I'll just bring it right here so we can check it out. You'll see I've got lots of stuff, a Chicago style amp, a little 76 compressor, a little bit of reflector reverb. So everything on there has got it the way I like it. Now, in terms of my vocal mic for when I'm singing, I've got it going through an API vision channel strip. So a little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression, preamp simulation. And I've also got it going through my favorite reverb, which I've got turned off right now because that would be annoying as heck if you heard this cavernous reverb while I'm instructing. Uh, that's Capital Chambers. So I love that Capital Chambers reverb. It's got a great sound. So all that is set up. And I've got things set up in a little bit of a different way because right now I'm setting up just for the recording aspect. Um, I actually don't have it wired to hear live without a sound guy. And let's talk about why. So if you take a look here, you'll see my vocal microphone and Capital Chambers Reverb, the output right here is going to output three on my audio interface. So I'm not using one or two, the master output that's hooked up to my speakers here. I'm using output three right there. And I've got the guitar going to line one and two as well. So I'm using all those line outputs. I'm not using my monitor outputs, just the line outputs. And the reason I'm using those separate outputs, uh, aside from my normal left, right, that I hook up to my monitors is that I'm simulating what I would do if I were live on a stage. So if I was playing a professional gig and I'm playing and singing, I really don't want everything mixed in all together. We have a sound guy. It's what we pay him for, right? He's going to mix me and he's going to make me sound great. So I want to send him my microphone separately from my guitar so that he can mix it or she can mix it to the level that they decide that they want it. Okay, now, of course, you don't always have the budget for a sound professional. So if I didn't, I would simply move all this over to my main outputs one and two. Uh, and then I would mix it myself, or I would bring a physical mixer and mix it myself before heading out to my speakers. But one of the things that I've got it that's neat is that in addition to being able to send these out separately to my sound person, I can record them separately. So I can record the output. I don't need to record from the board. I can actually record digitally right out of Gig Performer and get the purest, purest signal chain possible everything right out of Gig Performer. And I've got a choice on a couple of different ways I can record that. So I'm going to go to the recorder button down here in the bottom left. And when I click that, it's going to open up this dialog box. Now check this out. I can record direct from the inputs. So that's before all the processing has begun, which sometimes you want. I might want to record my microphone and my guitar totally clean with no you know, added color, no added effects. And then I might also want to record the outputs of everything uh, with the effects all mixed in. It all depends on, you know, how much work do I want to put in later? If I'm just doing a really quick, uh, you know, for social media or something, I want all the effects. I want everything as it was when it went out to the audience, right? I want everything already affected and mixed, stuff like that. But if I'm producing a live album, I know myself when I'm mixing a live album, 
I hate when people send me stuff with the effects already on it. I'm like, oh, please send me as dry as possible so that we can get in there, do some overdubs and tweaking. So the really cool thing is the gig performer gives you the best of both worlds. So I can record both of those inputs on their own right there, but I also can record my outputs now. So let's take a look. I'm recording the outputs. Now one and two are the guitar and they're together, they're stereo. So if I click on that, I've got it enabled, it's stereo. Now three is my vocal mic, but I'm not doing stereo for three and four, so I'm doing a mono output for that vocal mic. So I'll change that from stereo to mono, and I'll just enable part three. So I've got a bit depth, and I can start recording immediately. Of course, the sample rate will be whatever you've got Gig Performer set to. Uh, it even gives me the space required, so it's telling me how much time it needs for that, um, you know, per hour worth of recording. And when I'm done, I'll have all these files good to go. Now I can tell it where to put them. So right now you'll see it's putting it in my recordings folder inside my documents folder. So if I wanted to go somewhere else, if I got an external drive, if I'm doing a really long recording, whatever, it's all cool. I can also record MIDI input. So for you keyboardists out there, this is awesome. If you want to be able to go back later on and you're like, oh God, my piano sounded you know, terrible there. I really, I've switched over. I bought this new expensive, you know, VST for piano. You can record the MIDI output um, of your whole show and then later on go back and drop it into Logic or something or, you know, drop it back into Gig Performer and play it back and export a tweaked sound. You want to add a little more reverb. You want to switch piano instruments. So you can actually go ahead and record the MIDI output too if you're a keyboard player. I went with guitar though, it's a little easier to see. So once I hit start, it's going to start recording. Now it'll record while I'm playing. So I can just play my live show and record the output. And then when we're all done with the live show, I've got studio quality recordings direct from the app, not even routed out to a soundboard and back again, as clean as can be right there. So I hit record. There it is. Okay, I'll give myself a little chord. I'll perform. So recording output is the way. So you might want to update today. All right, I'm not the lyricist in my band. <laughs> Probably for the best. Come on, if we can't laugh at ourselves, uh, what are we doing here? So that's it, I'm done, I'm all set. I'll hit stop, and it stopped recording. So if I check that folder, okay, if I go to my documents folder, and I go to Gig Performer, I've got a recordings folder, and there you go. So GP Songwriter, that's the name of it, and then you can see the date and the time, and there we go, look at that everything. So I've got my line one and two. That should be my guitar isolated. I should hear no vocals because it was direct from my guitar. So I'll play it. There it goes. As clean as can be right out of there with all my studio effects and the vocals. You'll probably hear myself strumming a little bit and you'll hear a little bit of the guitars leaking out of the monitor. Record. There it is. Okay, I'll give myself a little chord. I'll perform. So, recording output is the way, so you might want to update today. There you go, and I've got that, you can hear the studio reverb on there. Now, just as an experiment, let me open up uh, mic, you know, hi Z, or let's open up the mic here, and that's recording the direct output, so you should hear no reverb on my voice, because I'm recording the actual input at the source. I'm recording mic one on my audio interface before it goes through all the processing record. There it is. Okay, I'll give myself a little chord. I'll perform. Dry as a bone. No reverb. So there you go. And the same thing with the guitar. It'll be direct and not, you know, doesn't have the sound of the reverb that I put on and the amp and all that stuff. Yeah, very tiny. But it's super clean and I can run it back through my own plugin chain and then get it going. So I've got the ability to record the finished product of all my audio and all my sounds routed through Gig Performer or record everything at the source before it goes through the chain or both, which is really awesome. And that's the flexibility that you want. Um, you can record all of your live performances now, uh, especially again, if you're a singer, like guitarist, songwriter, you should be bringing Gig Performer with you because you will have unbelievable access to effects that, you know, a, a small inexpensive effects pedal for your guitar or a little bit of onboard reverb from a mixing board is not going to be able to touch the unbelievable algorithms of the VSTs that are out there now. So, you know, you can bring everything that the big wigs have at those big studios and have it with you live. And the great thing is that if I wanted to, 
if I have a sound person, I can leave it like this and send them one, two, and three. If I don't, it's really easy for me to just grab the output from these. So let's say I grab that output and hook it up to an audio mixer, grab this output, hook it up to an audio mixer. And now if you look, if I open up that mixer, I've got mic and guitar. There they are. And I can send the output of this right here to the left and right monitor. And that means I can have everything coming out of the left and right monitor as well. So the great thing is I can leave all of that permanently hooked up. Now I won't hook that up right now because we're going to get a little bit of feedback from my mic and the speakers and everything like that. But the cool thing is you can leave that all permanently hooked up so that if you're doing a gig with just yourself and a PA system, you can use your main outputs and yourself will come out of the PA system. If you do a gig the next day with someone who's running sound for you, you can just not hook up those left and right monitors, and then you'll be able to just plug in the you know line outputs one, two, and three, and then they can run sound for you. So you can leave all this permanently hooked up just like that, and then outputs one and two on your audio interface are for if it's just you, and then outputs you know uh, line one, two, and three might of this audio interface might be if I'm performing with a sound person and I never have to like change it. I can just leave it that way. And just depending on which ones I hook up in the back of the uh, audio interface, everything's already ready to go. So I'm ready to go recording everything separately with effects, without effects. I've got access to a mixer if I need it for myself, if I'm doing my own gig, or I've got access to sending all three tracks out independently to another person and they can mix from a soundboard. So it's real easy to just go to the front panel uh, and then from there, edit your front panel and you can pop up your knobs and you can assign those knobs to whatever you want. So when I go to here, um, I just assign it to the audio mixer and then I can decide to go down and look for the mic output. And there you go. And that's going to be the volume of my microphone. So and then if I changed it to guitar or I put another one, you know, I put another knob in there with guitar, I now can do my own sound and adjust my own sound. So if I turn the guitar all the way down. I go back to the wiring, let's take a look. Look at that, guitar is all the way down and the mic is up right there. So that's the great thing is that like, you can do your own sound, you can have someone else do sound and you can leave it all configured so that you don't ever have to constantly change. I can use this same gig file for multiple situations and I don't have to set up anything special. If someone's like, hey, we're gonna do live video tonight. Can you, you know, what do we do to record you? I just go, I'm just gonna hit the record button. And they're like, oh, but I, I really want to use a direct box and get your guitar before it goes in. I'm like, you don't have to. I got it. <laughs> I got everything. I got the guitar pre-effects, post-effects, everything. Same with the microphone. So that's it. Um, it's a really, really great way to work. And it just shows you another flexibility of Gig Performer uh, that allows you to bring your studio stuff to the stage and then back to the studio again if you want to.